Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included on our frosty planet. We are continuing to try to figure out how to get this colony going a little smoother. Um, you know, getting this tepidizer working has been a lot more work than I thought it would be. And kind of the chaos of melting ice and needing insulated tiles. We probably started this project before we were capable of this project. <laughs> and yeah, that's what's going on. So what I'd like to do now, instead of what we have been doing, is dumping... Uh, it's just, it's hard to figure out. So what we really would like to do is have a dumping station and we could just dump ice in here and the tepidizer could do the work of warming up that ice so then it would melt and we wouldn't have to worry about the work of the bottle emptier and the ice liquefier because now the tepidizer is basically doing the work of liquefying so that's what long term i'd like to do but we're gonna need a sensor and we're gonna need automation wires because what we really want to do is turn off the dumping station, right? If the water level's high enough. And so I need to figure out oh, an easy way to do that. Um, I don't even know how to do dumping. I thought there was an item for it. Maybe I haven't unlocked it yet. But I was pretty sure there was a way to get dupes to dump items back into the world. Um, hmm, I'm pretty sure it exists, but I probably haven't unlocked it yet. Yeah, let's look at our research tree. It's probably in like the automation section or something. I know there is, yeah, where are you? Is it one of these? Yeah, that one. So we could have an automatic dispenser filled with ice and then send a green signal to it to, uh, you know, when the water level is too low. So that's a pretty simple idea. Um, I don't know if I want to do that right now just yet. I'm trying to think about what we really need to get done here. How's our, how's our oxygen supply? It actually looks okay for now. It's not great, but these are all working and I finally have enough of them working. So we should actually be taking care of our CO2 problems, <laughs> which we were not doing very effectively before. Um, I also would really like to get refined metal going, but that's gonna need a power solution AKA like a hydrogen generator or some other form of generator. Um, and what is, does heavy watt wire need? No, thankfully. I didn't know if it needed the um, refined metal, but it does not. And that can carry up to 20 kilowatts, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about overloading stuff. Um. Yeah, I really want refined metal. But I don't naturally have hydrogen anywhere. Um, oh, I guess there's a tiny bit over here. But realistically, I need an electrolyzer that's set up to produce hydrogen for us. So I probably should set one of these up somewhere. Um, I forget how to design a hydrogen room, so we're gonna do that together. <laughs> um, but let's let's try it out. Hydrogen is lighter than oxygen, so thankfully, if I run it up here, I won't have to worry about um, you know hydrogen escaping to the rest of the base quite yet. But yeah, I'm trying to remember the way to build this in such a way that it, it works out nicely. Maybe I want these to be normal tiles because we don't want airflow. I mean, I know one way is a filtered uh, air pump, but I feel like there was a way 
Yeah. I think you can just... I have an idea. Okay. So, we'll just do this. Uh, let's see. And I'll need an airlock there. I'll... And then eventually we'll build walls here, but not yet. And then we'll build our electrolyzer here. And then I need a pump. Gas pump. Underneath. And then a gas filter. This will mostly grab oxygen, but I can make sure we only get oxygen by having a filter. I want to say there's a way you can do this such that it always works out. I mean, the hydrogen's not going to get down here as long as the pressure's high enough. So I can always just use a pressure sensor. And then we wait until the pressure's, like, almost reached overpressure, where that the electrolyzer will stop working because of overpressure. And then we should be able to basically just get oxygen out from the bottom um that's the thought anyway we could also have an airlock an automated i don't have an automated airlock yet but once we unlock it that could be i tried to rotate the door by hitting r um we could have an automated airlock that opens when it's overpressured to let some oxygen out and then it would close again, you know, when the pressure drops a little bit and then it could kind of just keep doing that and the hydrogen would stay at the top. Eventually, though, if we're only letting out oxygen, it would let out hydrogen. So maybe we would need a filter. And I also can't remember if this is power positive or power negative. I want to say it's power positive once we're running this the hydrogen gives us enough power to run all the stuff but i legitimately cannot remember so we'll play around with this for a while i do think for now i'll do the gas pump method and how big is the gas filter gas filter is three tiles yeah i don't remember needing a gas filter Hmm. Definitely remember doing this differently, but I don't quite remember the way that I did it. But this will be fine. Uh, I guess I need to rotate that twice. Cancel you. Gas filter, rotate. There we go. And then we can have oxygen get dumped out into the base. And hydrogen, if it gets in, can just vent right back out. Or I can do something else with it. I don't know. Let's see if they end up being able to build that. If they build the tiles first, they might not be able to. And then this will be an airlock, eventually. So I guess I should build the ladders here. Do it like that. We will need power. So do I want to do heavy watts and transformers? I'm not sure. Hmm. Interesting. Limits power flowing. So we would get... I forget. Do machine... Can't you just hook machines up? To the heavy watt? Oh, oh, why am I forgetting whether this works or not? I have no memory of this. 100 grams makes 800 watts. Okay. Or I should say 800 joules would be a more accurate uh, thing. 
So how much power does the electrolyzer take? 120. The gas pump takes um, 240. Filter takes 120. So that's 360. 480 power. And this makes 112 grams of hydrogen per second. So this actually makes more hydrogen than we need. Than we need. Interesting. And it makes 888 grams a second of oxygen, which is enough for how many dupes? What do they breathe again? Hundred grams a second normally. Is that right? Yeah. So it's basically enough for almost nine dupes if one of those is running. And that's of course ignoring the fact that I have the Alveo Veras. This is more for power than it is for anything else. Oh, and we send the liquid in. I, uh, automated stuff. Oh, but I need insulated pipes. Ugh. So frustrating. Um. I still am surprised there's not a machine where dupes deliver water directly to something that then just puts it into the pipe system. It feels weird that you need a bottle emptier and a pump. I guess it makes some amount of sense. But yeah, I'm gonna need an insulated liquid pipe to take water all the way up there, which... Oh god, do I have enough for that? Maybe. Yeah? Looks like we had enough. Uh-oh. Be careful here. Don't do that. Cancel the build. Um, I need the crossover. Plumbing, liquid bridge. Now, can you not do an insulated liquid bridge? That feels a little odd to me. So that'll be the weak point, eh? Actually, hold on. Now that I think about it, why do I have these pipes in the first place? I can just deconstruct that pipe. And deconstruct all these pipes. Uh, those are serving no purpose. Do need to deconstruct it first, I guess. Oh, that's the ladder. Uh, liquid pipe. Deconstruct. Oh, uh, it, it won't let me. I have to deconstruct the pipe first, then override that. Alright, I do think I'm ready for dupe number seven. Ah, eh, am I? Maybe not quite. I'll wait until we've consumed more CO2. I still don't know how this keeps happening. Um... Because how is polluted water getting on top of that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, obviously something's freezing. Can the polluted, but the polluted oxygen's not freezing into solid oxygen, that's not a thing. I mean, it is a thing, but it's not cold enough for that. So how is ice getting on top of this? I don't get it. Because polluted water somehow must be getting on top. Doesn't really make sense to me. It's also nice that polluted oxygen is lighter than oxygen, so it's mostly staying up here. 
actually really handy that that's the case. <laughs> um, maybe I should mine out a little bit more over here to make more room for the polluted oxygen. Because I don't have a filtering system yet. Food is still going okay. We're getting a little too... Uh-oh. What is going on here? Is this exactly what I feared? I haven't been watching. Do they just continue emptying bottles? They do, even when it's overflowing. Okay, wow, that's really dumb. I assumed it would auto shut off um, before, like once, you know, it reached the level of the bottle emptier, but it, it does not. It does not auto shut off. That's actually really, that's really annoying. Uh, I guess nothing's automatic in this game unless you make it that way. So now we have to mop everything. I guess most of it will refreeze if I just give it time, except for the polluted water. Because that freezes at a much higher temperature, or lower temperature. Okay, and the, the fluids in here are 30 degrees, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna disable this. And I'll just keep an eye on that. Okay, so I just Googled it. Uh, I was curious about the insulated pipes mechanics. So what it does is it changes, I mean, we already knew it changed the thermal conductivity to way less. It's about 3% of the original. I found out. And it also makes it so that the it uses the lower thermal conductivity of the two, whereas with regular pipes, it apparently averages the thermal conductivity. Um, so this is actually a lie for pipes. Pipes conducting with their uh, with their fluid inside of them uses the average thermal conductivity of the two, but with insulated, it does use the lower. So it, that's why it, it works so well. And obviously with more mass, it means the temperature of the insulated pipe stays much more constant, but yeah, so should be fine. I'm going to mop these bits up and yeah, so the problem with temperature here is that the air is kind of getting warmed up by our relatively warm water here. And then that's warming up the air over there because I need things to be closer to... I wish this was easier to move. Hard to get this exactly where you want it. Um, I want it to be like negative 10. Yeah, because these things need negative 14. And I kind of screwed things up by doing it this way. I guess I could... Do an airlock. And then some insulated tiles. And then an airlock. And that'll just keep... It'll slow down dupes a lot. But it'll keep a lot more of the heat inside. You just drop your pike apple on the, on the freaking floor of our water here. I don't understand dupes sometimes. <laughs> oh my. Why would you do this? <sighs> Oops, making messes, eh? Meta Mike. Speaking of dupes. Uh, plume squash seed, sure. I'm not ready for another dupe. Okay. So these are all running. Yeah. Good, good, good. How's our wood supply? Uh, it's going down 7,500. We were at 8,000 a while ago, but the phloxes are helping. 
For sure. This is staying filled with pike apples. There we go. I don't love that they can't get around this, so I may uproot a few here and we'll reposition things. And we'll do something like that. So the, the water room will stay water room. And that means I'll need a few more farm tiles. Food. Farm tile. Move those over there. Okay, now I need another insulated liquid pipe. Out of igneous. the carrying capacity is of a normal dude. I meant to look at that. Can you see that somewhere? Like, I know the stronger dupes can carry, you know, so many kilograms extra, but what's their base carrying capacity? I have no idea. Oh, well. Oh, look at this. CO2 is finally starting to drop. Nice. That's great. Great news. Still, I'm confused about this. Is the temp... Maybe... So there's polluted ice right there. Maybe what's happening is somehow that polluted ice is melting. And then it's... Refreezing. And when it refreezes, it freezes into a tile rather than... An object. But don't you need a bunch of it to freeze into a tile? I don't actually know how that works. Like, what determines whether something freezes into just a, a little chunk of ice or an actual, you know, square of ice? And I would guess it's the amount. Hmm. Like, smaller amounts will turn into the little chunks. But I don't know. Okay, and how many phloxes do we have in here? Only four? Where did those eggs go? 50%. Eh, they, they take 20 cycles to incubate. That's not very fast. There's another egg in here somewhere, I think. Or it's down there, I guess. <laughs> That's fine, we'll catch it once it hatches. Alright, so now that's done, we should be keeping more of the heat in. Oh. Interesting. Iron versus cinnabar. I'm not sure of the property difference, but that's not a good insulating airlock. So that thing's gonna warm up. Why is it not... Oh, somehow I hit the details button. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, the thermal conductivity is quite high. But I guess that doesn't matter, because this one's the lower one. So what matters is just that this easily... What does that mean? I guess it... Hmm... I guess the thermal conductivity doesn't matter. when it's exchanging with air. So it's really just the heat capacity. Or or is that wrong about more things than I think? And does it average? I'm gonna look that up real quick on BRB. Okay, so I looked it up and the way that it works is um, the temperature transfer between a tile and 
air or a uh, gas is 25 times higher than it than it kind of says so essentially it's actually quite a bit more conductivity than you think probably because the mass the masses of you know these things are so low they probably want things to conduct a bit more realistically so it's all kind of black magic but essentially it is the lower of the two that matters when conducting with air still so we don't we can't really do anything to insulate against air like having an insulated tile i guess an insulated tile is almost lower than air but you know most tiles are going to transmit stuff to air as fast as any other tile so the fact that this is 4.5 doesn't really change how quickly the air next to it heats up all that matters is the difference in temperature. And, um, I mean, that's really all that matters, yeah. Obviously, depending on the mass that's next to it, it might, if it's only 500 grams, it'll heat up twice as much as if it's 1,000 grams. But the gases mix with each other pretty consistently, and so there's not really anything I can do about that. Um,. So I want to mine that out just because it doesn't look very good. And we probably need more airflow tiles in here. But I think we're actually okay on airflow. So what? Oh, we need a plant. Pike apples. So what is a plume squash? It also wants cold. Oh. It also wants cold. That means I could plant it here. Oh, it needs ethanol. Well, I don't have that. Never mind. Continuing with pike apples. And do I still have enough phosphorite for pike apples? What were they? Five gram kilograms a cycle, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 of them. It's about 100 kilograms a cycle, a ton every 10 cycles. Yeah, I have 200 cycles worth of phosphorite. And there's plenty more around. So I still don't have to worry about that. Does seem like we're finally getting a lot of that CO2 consumed, finally catching up. That wood needs to be swept. My dupes never have time for sweeping. That's usually a bad sign. And yet, what are they all doing? It just feels like they're always doing things that are unimportant somehow. Well. I guess that's important. They're constructing this stuff up here. It is getting done slowly. Now what I'm curious about, can they hang on to a ladder if the tile above it? They might be able to reach it from there, so we might not find out. But I'm curious if that will work. So many little things to test, because it's just, I've forgotten how everything works in this game. It didn't make that reachable. Interesting. If I mine that out. We got 400 kilograms of oxalate. That's amazing. Finally building up the oxalate. Okay, yeah, now they can reach it. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, this needs to be airflow tiles. Is that the problem? Otherwise, that should be reachable. Can you just go through the door? Why is that an unreachable dig? Oh, is it because of this tile? Maybe? It might be because of that tile. I'm not really sure. Put 
Regardless, we will want a battery. Eventually. Um, not really sure where I want to build that. Okay, so one thing I think I want to do is add a second schedule so the dupes aren't always on the same bathroom visit schedule. Um, I wonder what the, the little sun symbols mean. What's that about? Bedtime, bath time. So basically I want bath time to be shifted up. Bedtime to be there. I do wish I understood what those symbols were. I wonder if that has to do with like space stuff. That might be it. So like that sunrise maybe. And that's darkness. But yeah, we're shifting everything one to the right. So downtime moves to the right. Work moves to the right. Wait. What did I do? Did I take away a downtime a while? I might have taken away a downtime a while back. Maybe that's part of the problem that I've had. I don't remember. Okay, so th now these dupes are shifted one, one hour to the right, and I'm just gonna pick a random three. Doesn't really matter. And now they should have less, um, less overall time where they're wanting to use the bathroom or the mess hall at the same time. And that should help a little bit with morale. Lojo is constantly chilly. Yeah. Having clothes would be nice. I have no idea how you craft clothes. Um, I assume at some point you can research it, but exosuits would be a way to do it. They could probably stay warm in exosuits if they're constantly in them. But yeah, that's not going to happen. Forging, that's nothing. Yeah, I don't actually know. I don't really know. Bioengineering. Huh. So many things. Alright, well this is almost done. That's good news. So I should hook things up with wire. Why can't I build... Oh, right. You can't build heavy watts inside tiles. That's one of the annoying things about them. So you need these join plates. Um, I had forgotten about that. So we have to deconstruct that. Wait. Oh, that can't overlap with the little power plug. Do I want heavy watt for this? I guess what I need is just a transformer, maybe. Basically, I only want excess power to flow out. So I'll need a transformer that only turns on when Oh man, I don't even know. Okay, go back to the... <laughs> I don't want heavy watt wires. Um, I guess it's fine, because I'm not going to have enough. I can just connect heavy watts with regulars, which sounds really weird. That's fine. Cancel that. Cancel that. Heavy watt, cancel. Wire. Deconstruct. Cancel build. Cancel build. Okay. So I do just want regular wire to hook all this up.
and then I'll figure out transformer nonsense. I don't really remember how to do that, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. How's water and temperature and all that? Um, it's definitely still letting out warmth, but it's obviously better without the air being able to just flow back and forth easily. That helps. Um, it's probably messing, messing up these pike apples that are really close. But I think we're okay. Airlock's about 8 degrees. Whereas this is 30. Yeah. And I think 30 is good. We'll run the tepidizer once in a while to keep it about that. Um, that puts... Yeah, it looks like the, the coldest the water's getting is 9.5 degrees. That's more than fine. And it... Once it catches up, it'll be even warmer. Because this is all 30. So that might have been before I had it tepidized. It does take a while for the lavatories to cycle through. Per usage, it's only... Does it tell me? It's only, yeah, half of one of those water, like, bubbles per usage. It is water positive. And that is important when you get the water. If you have plenty of sand to, to uh, you know, clean the water, you can basically use your dupe water <laughs> as, a, as a positive thing to power. You can, yeah, the power of piss is, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, pretty effective, actually. So now what do we do here? So I guess... If we are outputting... Why is this not letting me click on it? So you can't type here? That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so we filter out oxygen. And then the rest, which will be only hydrogen, should come out here. I guess there's a low chance that over time some weird foreign thing finds its way in. To this area like a like a piece of carbon dioxide and that's gonna damage the hydrogen generator but that should be rare enough that i don't think we'll have to worry too much about it um i hope yeah we'll see how this works i'm gonna need a spin up so we'll throw a manual generator up here. And then we're also going to need a battery. Which eventually will be a smart battery, so we're not losing the power that we're generating. On a daily basis. But other than that, we should be pretty close to done with this, which is nice. Whoa, new blueprints unlocked. What? Oh, what is this? This is like a DLC stuff? Is this just the way things, is this like, a, you know, cosmetics? I assumed that button was just going to take me to my printer. Okay, I'm going to... That feels like that could last a while. I thought it was just going to take me to this. <laughs> uh, I do not need an alveolaris seed. So I'm rejecting everything. Whatever. I don't need any idea. Just these manual airlocks are so slow. They're still melting, huh? Fair enough. Uh, 
Okay, attribute increase. I like that. Getting faster at running around. And doing nonsense. Yeah, this is continuing to frustrate me. Um, I could pretty easily mine that out. And that would help a little bit. Because then CO2 is able to get over there. Pressure seems to be about a thousand, which is wonderful. Finally feels like the alveolar is caught up. Probably because, what, was it last episode or two episodes ago, I finally did the correct math on how many I needed to supply the oxygen. So that was a good, that was a good moment for, for everyone. <laughs> but yeah, I believe this should work once it's running. Um, and it should self-sustain power-wise. I am a bit concerned about... I guess it should pull the hydrogen down once it pumps out all the oxygen, right? Guess we'll see. It's running now. Why did that just get damaged? Was it the CO2? Yeah. Ugh. Oh, it comes back out? Okay, good. It disappeared. Nope. Is that gonna keep happening? Just perpetually? With that 20 grams of carbon dioxide? Uh, That's really annoying. Um... Okay. So what we need this to do, then, is the other way. No, don't deconstruct. Disable that for a minute. We need to filter out the opposite thing. So we need to send only hydrogen into that, is what we want for the filter. Where's the, the gas overlay? Which one is it? That's oxygen overlay. Ventilation, there it is. That looks like a... What even is that? I guess those are just like little gas clouds. Anyway. Um, I want to deconstruct... Not that. Well. I don't want to deconstruct the gas filter, though. Just the pipes. I think that is what I did. Yeah, okay. So now we need to build the pipes again. This time, connecting that up and this down. And then the filter will filter unbreathable hydrogen gas. There's, there's hydrogen. There it is. Yeah, I should have thought about that. That little, that little blip of CO2 <laughs> ruined everything. Ruined everything. Okay, there we go. Now activate that. And our little hydrogen chamber should work. Because it won't have hydrogen at first, but that's because it's so full of oxygen. So it'll be pumping the oxygen out into there, into that gas vent. And then over time, it'll, you know, just have hydrogen coming in. because the oxygen's all gone. What is it, 500 grams per little chunk? Oh, so that's actually not fast enough then. For the elect I would need two pumps for the electrolyzer to work. I guess that makes some amount of sense. You need two to one, <laughs> I remember that loosely. But this'll work. Oh no, I forgot about gas vent overpressure. That's an issue too. I guess two kilograms per square is overpressuring the gas vent. So we need a, there is a high pressure gas vent. Um, I wonder how far we are away from that. Liquids, gases, gases. Um. This one? Yeah. So, oh, cool. I thought I was gonna have to do that one first. I can skip this one. 
It might be useful to do that at some point. Oxygen masks could be nice. But... For now... And an Atmos sensor will be useful, so... I'll take it. And yeah, with a high pressure gas vent, then we won't have to worry about it. Though, you just watch. The high pressure gas vent is going to require refined metal. That's, that's my guess. And eventually, it should just sustain itself. As long as water keeps coming. One kilogram a second of water. Every trip to the bottle emptier is... I mean, I'm trying to do some math. So one kilogram a second is 600 kilograms a day, which is still less than one water tile a day. So it's not that much. Uh, it does add up, though. You know, we've only got... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... I've only got 14 water tiles here, and one of them is filled with a few grams of carbon dioxide. But, you know, that's how it works. So yeah, then really I would want another gas pump, maybe at the top. Yeah, I could design a much better build than this. But for now it's working. And we might end up with too much oxygen. Is that a problem? Not really. The only purpose of these is to scrub the CO2 from the air. Uh, so they'll keep doing that no matter what. As long as there's CO2 there, which is perfect. And then the oxalite here will actually stop off-gassing if the pressure is high enough. So you can see here the, the, uh, the weight is not changing. And that's because the pressure here is like 15... I don't remember when oxalite stops. It might be 1,500 grams per tile. So as long as this thing is overpressuring to 2,000 grams... You know, the oxalate's just going to keep building up here, so we'll have a nice big supply of oxalate over time. I should also lock these. Just to make sure they don't accidentally go in there to, like, fetch this ice and mess everything up. Because, yeah, what I'm wanting is to pull the oxygen out of here so the hydrogen expands. Now that's another question I have uh, that I've never I've never wondered about until just now. Do gases expand or if there's one tile of gas will it always be one tile of gas? Like as the pressure gets lower and lower uh, Am I making sense? Let's say there's it does seem like they expand and contract because, yeah, because here I paused it and there's five tiles of hydrogen. And here I pa yeah. So it seems like the hydrogen's constantly kind of trying to figure out, does it need to expand to fill the space, condense because the pressure around it's too high? I don't know exactly what the rules are. They're probably even more black magic-y than the heat transfer equations. That much I'm confident in. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's black magic. But eventually, we should pump enough oxygen out of here that this gas pump will take in hydrogen. That's my thought, anyway. We'll see if it's right or wrong. This will keep creating until it hits max gas pressure. So this will keep the pressure high. And eventually, most of the pressure in the room should be hydrogen. So I, I think eventually we'll get there. But yeah, I can see now that I could easily trust this to always be oxygen. I don't think I need the gas filter. I think I could have another one up here that would use the gas filter because it's going to end up with hydrogen a decent amount of time and oxygen a decent amount of time. So I can have one up here with the filter and then one down there without a filter. 
And I think that would work out okay. Because... Uh, yeah, I mean... Then they would draw overpressure, though. Right? Like, they would actually empty out the whole thing of gas. Because these would be drawing out a thousand. And this is making... Oh, this is making a thousand. So it theoretically would be... Um... Steady state, actually. Huh. Okay, well maybe I should just fix that? I don't know, I kind of want to see this version work. But, technically that would work. And should be steady state. Which is pretty nice. So, what's next on the list of projects we need to do? Probably power of some sort. I mean, that's what this was. Do I want to work on more Floxen? Can you... Can you free range wrangled critters? I guess that's another thing I don't know. Because they do need to feed. Hmm. So, if I'm, if, uh, I guess the shearing station needs to be in a, whatever it's called. What is it called? A stable. Um, and that has a max size of 96, so I could open up another 24 tiles, which would be two. And then we've got that and two more. So that will open up to the max size stable. But I guess my question is like, could I just have them roaming around and it wouldn't matter? And they would still get taken to the shearing station and then I wouldn't have to worry about the size being cramped and I could have like 40 phloxes running around. I know I would need a lot of pike apples for that, but. Yeah, and what about incubators? I should probably look into that. Uh, stations? No, uh, utilities. No. Food. Have I not researched it yet? Maybe it's in the next research. Or critters. I thought it was in the one we did. No, it's the next one. No, that's a fish trap. Um, fish feeder. Ranching. Yeah, there's no incubator. Where is the egg incubator? Am I blind? I must be blind. 100% chance I'm blind, but where... Oh, it's right there. Okay, I was looking at the wrong glass ball. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, we can do that. So let's do the animal control research. And we'll need this agriculture one anyway, eventually, so we'll just get both done. And now critter drop-off, we can have... I'll do eight critters. No, we can have nine. And then the eggs will make them cramped, but that's okay. I can incubate the eggs somewhere else. Okay, how are we doing here with our hydrogen? Still going. Hydrogen pressure is slow to increase. Also, it's just funny, it keeps telling me, it's been telling me insufficient oxygen generation forever, but that's because it doesn't count oxalite as oxygen generation and that's been my primary source we have plenty of oxygen let me tell you okay well i think this is a good spot to end the episode we got our first hydrogen generator set up and we'll see if it eventually starts powering itself i think it will that will i guess remain to be seen but um, I am going to head out for this episode. If you have any comments on what to do in future episodes or what you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. I am very much enjoying this series still and plan to keep going for a while. So, as always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.